I had a need, I had an idea, and I have a 3D printer, so I made a thing. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. You may have seen a video I made almost three years ago now about adding a compressed air manifold and a regulator to my mill to run a low pressure blow gun. I actually have these manifolds on several machines here in the shop, and when I make them, I always include an extra port for running air tools or mist coolant or whatever else I might find a use for in the future. Now most of the time these extra ports are just sitting open, unused, and they're exposed to chips and dust and other debris in the shop. So today we're going to make rubber dust covers for them. There'll be some CAD, there'll be some 3D printing, and I'll show how I iterate a design, fixing problems as I find them. This is the manifold on the back of my vertical mill. The air comes in to the bottom here through a quarter turn ball valve into a shop made manifold with three ports. The port here on the right goes up to the power draw bar on the mill and the top port on the left goes into this pressure regulator for an air blow gun. Now I always use a pressure regulator on these blow guns so that I can run them at relatively low pressure. I don't want to run full shop air or it'll just launch chips all over the shop. So I can turn it down or I can turn it up to get more or less air depending on what I need. Now in addition to the power draw bar and the blow gun, I added an additional coupler here for mist coolant or air tools or whatever. And here on the mill, it's in the back here where it's protected, but over on the lathe, the one that I have over there is just sitting down below the machine where it's going to be exposed to chips and dust and, you know, whatever else falls on it. So I'd really like to have some dust covers that go over these just to plug the end and keep the debris out of the connector that I can pop off when I need to use it. Now I've got some flexible 3D printing filament. This is uh, made by Ninja Tech. This is called Ninja Tech Cheetah. It has a 95A durometer rating, so it's pretty flexible, but it's still pretty easy to print. They claim this stuff prints with ABS settings. Uh, I find that I like to slow it down a little bit more than that. It's a little bit stringy, but it's a nice rubbery material that should be great for designing some dust caps. Now I need some dimensions here. There's a little hole in the end. I'd like the cap to kind of fit into that and plug it so I can get the dimension of that. I also want it to fit over the outside so I'll get the dimensions there. Then there's a little kind of reduced area here that'd be perfect for a little ring on the cap to snap into. So I'll get the dimensions of that and I'll take these into the computer in Fusion 360 and try to design something that will fit over the end of this. Now designing with flexible materials is a little bit different than designing with rigid materials because you have to kind of think about how the material is going to move, but it's not that difficult. I do find though that it takes a few more iterations often with the flexibles to get something that's going to work. There are lots of different ways to model this and I'm going to do it by revolving a sketch to create the main body of the cap. Now before we do anything, I want to make sure that I have my preferences set properly. Here under design, there's an option, scale entire sketch at first dimension. By default, this is off. Uh, I like to have this on so that I can sketch out my dimension. I can sketch out my part with no dimensions on it. And then when I add the first dimension, it doesn't twist up my, my sketch. It just scales the entire thing to the correct size. So let's create a sketch and create this on the YZ plane. And then I'll use the line tool to just sketch out the cross section of what I'm imagining here in my head. Hit L for line. And I'm going to start with a center line and that will be the point that I'm going to revolve around. And then I'll use the line tool and just sketch out the rest of what I'm imagining. I'm letting it put in the vertical and horizontal dimensions as I go. And of course that last one didn't end up horizontal, so I'll put a horizontal constraint on that. And then we need to scale the entire thing. So the overall inside size here, if I hit D for dimension and go from the center line out, I want the overall dimension of this thing to be 23 millimeters, but this is only half of it. So I'll place my dimension and just say 23 divided by two, 
and you can see it scaled the entire sketch down and that makes life a lot easier. So I know that this center plug needs to be 11 and a half millimeters. So 11.5 divided by two. And I know the height of this center plug, I want to be six millimeters. So I will go from here to here and say six. Now the overall chamfer here, I do want this at 45 degrees. So I'll go ahead and put an angle constraint on here. 45 and then I know that I want the width of this to be meh, about a millimeter and it really doesn't matter exactly what that is I just want it to be something reasonable and one millimeter seems reasonable to me okay the thickness of the base here let's just pick a number let's call that two millimeters and then the thickness of the outside wall let's make that a millimeter and a half okay the overall depth up to this lip I know from the measurements I took, I want that to be eight millimeters. And then I want the rest of the height here to be another two and a half. Okay, now that's twisted things up a little bit. Okay, now I do want to control the, the diameter of this lip. So we'll put a dimension on, whoa, D for dimension. A dimension on that and that I want to be 10.9 millimeters which is 21.8 divided by 2 and then we've got our little chamfers here and this is the same deal as before I want those 45 degrees I could just use the chamfer tool after the fact to do this but I I go back and forth whether I want to just put this all in the sketch or whether I want to actually dimension this stuff up and then put the chamfers on later uh, there's pros and cons to both okay this chamfer should be one millimeter wide and there we have the whole shape defined and everything is black meaning that we have this fully constrained so i'll click finish sketch select that click the revolve tool select this axis and now we have the solid for our cap and this should be ready to print and go out and try on the machine. But I would like to put a little tab on this because when I pull it off of the connector, I don't want to lose it. So I'll just click on the back here, right click and say create sketch. And I'll hit L for line, X for construction. And we'll just put a construction line out here. And then C for circle, I'll hit X to turn off construction. And let's just put a circle. I want the hole in this thing to be... Uh, let's call it two millimeters. See, it's just scaled my entire sketch here on the first dimension. That's not exactly what I wanted. Okay, and then I'm going to use the offset tool to put a, say, a two millimeter border around that. Uh, I don't like the look of that. Let's make this maybe four millimeters. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable. L for line. Uh, actually, I need to project the edges of this. P for project, select the bottom of there, and that will give me sketch geometry around the edge there. L for line, and we'll just go from here and come down, let that snap tangent. And then I use the tangent tool to make these lines tangent to the big circle as well. Then I'll just kind of move this until I like the shape of it. That looks about right. Kind of dimension are we on here? D for dimension. Yeah, 20 millimeters looks good to me. Okay, finish that. Select, control select. E for extrude, minus two. Give me two millimeters of depth. Okay, that gives me a little tab on the side. I like that. I don't like this sharp edge, so F for fillet. Click that, one millimeter. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll just export this and bring it into the slicer. I have the part loaded in Prusa Slicer, and that's because I'm going to print this on the Prusa i3 Mark 3S Plus. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have this printer very well tuned for printing this particular filament. This is the filament that I use for the button sets for the electronic lead screw, so I've spent a lot of time tuning this. This particular printer has a polycrystalline diamond nozzle, a diamond back brand PCD nozzle, and I find that that works really well for this flexible filament because it's so conductive. 
The conductivity is so high that it carries the heat into the material easily, so I can actually run it at a slightly lower temperature, still get reasonable flow rates, and that lower temperature reduces the stringing, which is kind of the big problem that you run into with these filaments. So I have a profile already tuned for Ninja Tech Cheetah. We can take a, a quick look at what I'm doing here. I'm running this at 220 degrees Celsius, and I find that I need an extrusion multiplier above one. I'm running at 1.1, and the reason is because the flexible filament kind of squirms around the extruder gears, and you don't get as much pushed through as you would with a more rigid filament. So I've had to bump that up to 1.1 to get it to fill completely. And then I've messed around with the retraction. I'm currently using a two millimeter retraction at 45 millimeters per second and a 0.1 millimeter lift. And I find that that works pretty well. For print settings, I am doing my first layer at 0.2 millimeters, but I'm doing the rest of the layers at 0.3. The 0.2 millimeters is important to get a good, a good first layer laid down on the bed, but then after that I can bump it up, bump it up to 0.3 millimeters and it'll print quite a bit faster. And then under skirt and brim, I do have a skirt defined a minimum of one loop two millimeters out from the object. And when we slice this, this creates a loop on the bed to prime the nozzle. Now the printer is going to actually prime the nozzle at the front, you know, the way it normally does on the uh, Prusa i3 Mark III, but I find that this stuff is just oozy enough that if I have it come out and print a couple of lines around the part, right next to the part before it starts printing, that takes care of any additional blobs or oozing or anything that's left on the nozzle. This stuff is pretty sticky, and I find that that really helps to get a good clean print. And even on the Mark III, which is admittedly an older generation printer and not particularly fast, this only takes about 15 minutes, so it should be easy to print several of these as we iterate through the design. And here's the part right off the printer. You can see that the result here is really quite clean. There's the bottom surface that's against the textured bed, and you can see that the top surfaces have filled and closed completely, and it fits. We get a nice neat snap action as that goes on, as that little ring drops into the groove between the knurling passes on the connector. I think that is gonna keep dust out nicely. We do need to put together some kind of a lanyard to hold this on. We left a hole here so we could use some kind of piece of string or a piece of wire. Or I've been thinking about maybe a way I could use a zip tie for this, but we need to figure out how long that needs to be. I can take a measurement here with calipers, but of course it's not the straight line distance that matters because I'd like to have this kind of hang down. And by waving the calipers around in the air, I can kind of estimate this needs to be 60, 70 millimeters, something like that. But as I'm looking at this and as I'm thinking about it, I'm realizing that there's no reason that we have to use some other kind of material for the lanyard. We don't need any string. We've got flexible filament here. We might as well just 3D print a flexible strap to hold this on, some kind of a little lanyard that's integral to the cap that goes around the base of the connector. Now I just need to know how big it needs to be. So off the back, it's like 14 millimeters. Around the hex, it's like 19. So somewhere in between there would be a good diameter for a little loop that we could stretch over the connector. This stuff's really quite stretchy. I think it's something like 580% elongation at break. So we should be able to make something that'll snap over the connector and hold this on. Let's modify the design. Instead of using a tab with a little hole in it to use a string, let's go ahead and 3D print the entire lanyard shape to make this work. I'll start by modifying this sketch. And I know that instead of 20 millimeters, I wanna bring this out, let's call it 75 millimeters. That will probably be good. And then instead of a four millimeter hole, since we want to go around the base of the connector, I measured that and that needs to be 17 and a half millimeters. Okay, that looks good. Let me delete these lines and let's put in some new ones. Let's make the lanyard five millimeters wide. So we'll hit O for offset and we'll offset this five divided by two because we're gonna go both directions and then O again for offset, 
minus five divided by two, and that'll give us two and a half millimeters on each side. Finish the sketch and let's edit our extrude. We need to select the new profile here. Instead of two millimeters, let's make that one millimeter so it will be more flexible. That looks good. And before that little fillet, let me put in some larger fillets here. I'm gonna fillet these vertical edges here. Let's call this five millimeters. That looks good. I do the same thing here. I just put in something little, maybe one millimeter. Okay, that looks nice. Then we'll roll the history back over our one millimeter there. And that looks good. I think that's ready to print. You can see there was a little bit of stringing from the front purge area over to the part, and that's why that skirt's there to help keep it clean. And while this part looks quite a bit bigger, there's only three or four layers in the lanyard, so the overall print time is still only about 15 minutes. And here's the printed part. I was really just sort of guessing that five millimeters wide by one millimeter thick would be flexible enough, and that does seem about right. See about the length. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I think 75 millimeters was a good choice for that. Now let's get this stretched over the connector. Now, this stuff does stretch, and it does stretch a lot, but it is pretty stiff. So having a hook or some other kind of tool to get it over here helps. This is just an O-ring pick, and you can see that stretched to maybe double the size that it was printed, and that just goes right on there. Now it is kind of twisted back there. It doesn't matter at all, but it bothers me. So I'll try to spend a minute here and get this straightened out and it's still twisted. Yes, yes, I know it doesn't matter, but it bothers me. There we go. Now it's flat. Okay, so that just hangs there and the cap easily reaches the end and snaps on. And when I pop it off, I can just drop it and it just sits there out of the way while I use the connector. And I can just pop that right back on when I'm done. I think that is going to work. Now, as I'm popping this on and off, though, I'm noticing that it's sort of hard to get a grip on it. If I try to squeeze it, it just pinches the connector. I can pull from the lanyard, but that's kind of awkward and it kind of stretches it funny. And just pushing on this edge, it you can do it, but it's kind of sharp and it kind of hurts. Now, this original cap that I had had this tab on it. And that actually made it really easy to grasp. I think what we need is to put a tab back on this. We took it off to put on the lanyard, but I think I'm gonna go put a tab back on this just to make it easier to manage. I'll pull this off. I really don't need to do this. I could just break it. It really doesn't matter. I'm not gonna use it. This is just an, an intermediate design, but I'll get it off of here. This isn't really the right tool, but with enough brute force, it'll come off. And you can see even with all that stretching, it's not distorted at all. Let's go put a tab on this. There are lots of ways to model a thumb tab. I'm gonna go back to the sketch we used to design the lanyard and modify that. So we have a circle around the outside here. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna say offset and let's say four millimeters. That'll give us an additional line out here. And then let me Put another line in here from the center of the circle out to the edge. And I'm going to mirror that line around this center line for the lanyard. Now let's put something on this to control the width. D for dimension. And let's call this maybe 40 degrees. Yeah, that looks good. Finish the sketch. Now the sketch is off because we already used it once. I'll switch that back on, select this, E for extrude, minus two, and now we have a tab. Now, I don't like the way that looks. I'll turn the sketch back off. Let's uh, clean that up. So F for fillet, and I'll select these two inside edges here. Make that maybe five millimeters. F for fill it again, and we'll do the outside edges here, maybe one millimeter. And that looks much better. I'm happy with that. Eh, as long as we're at it, let's put another millimeter here on top. F for fill it, click there, one. Okay. And now we have a thumb tab. Well, let's print that out, see how that works. And 15 minutes later, we are ready to give this another try. 
You see the only difference between this one and the one before is just that tab that we added. And in fact, if you compare the loops on the back of the lanyards, one of these has been stretched and it returned to exactly the original size. This stuff is fantastic. You can stretch it all day and it will just snap right back. I grab my hook and put this on. And this time I didn't twist it, so it's not bugging me. Snap it on there and try the new tab. And that's much easier. I like that a lot. I think two millimeters of thickness on that is about right. Makes it rigid enough to make it easy to grab. I do feel like the snap onto here is still a little bit too tight. It doesn't feel like it's too snug. It feels like the size is about right, but I think the, the hoop strength on that, that rib around the outside is just a little bit too high. It makes it a little bit too hard to stretch it over the connector. I don't want to change the diameter, but I think if I could break up that hoop, I think it would make it easier to get on and off while still fitting well and sealing out the dust. So let me grab my hook and pull this off once again. You know, sooner or later, I'm going to put this hook through my finger. I haven't done it yet, as far as you know, but uh, it's probably just a matter of time. So let's take this back into the computer and see what we can do about weakening that that little snap ring. To make this go on and off easier, I think what I need to do is reduce the hoop strength. There's a lot of material here with this little ridge on the inside that, that captures over the knurling on the connector. The overall thickness of that plus the thickness of the side of the cap, there's a lot of material there and all of that has to stretch. So what I wanna do is try to break that up a little bit so that we don't have that continuous strand or those continuous strands of filament all the way around the outside so that it will stretch and fit over a little bit more easily. So I'm going to go back to the original sketch here, double click to edit, and I'm going to add one new line. Hit L for line. I'm just going to add a vertical line right here, and that'll give me a little profile that I can use to make some cuts. So finish the sketch. Now I'm going to turn that sketch back on. Now I need to select through in order to select that. So I'm going to click and hold and now it'll pop up and I can come down here and select profile. I can also select the faces, but what I want is the profile that it's highlighting there. Click that and now I have that and I can click revolve. Now I want to revolve that around some axis. You don't actually have to have an axis. I do have the line there, but you can also just select a, a cylindrical feature like the inside of this and now that's going to extrude all the way around. I don't want to go all the way around. Let's go symmetric and let's go about 20 degrees. Okay, that looks good. So that's just going to cut out a section of that. Click OK. Now I can turn that sketch off. Now I'd like to put several cuts around the outside. So I will say create pattern, circular pattern and I would like to pattern features. And the feature I want, to, I want to pattern is this cut, so this little revolve, I'll select it down here on the timeline. And then the axis, same thing, I'll just select something cylindrical, and let's do four of those all the way around. Click OK, and now we have those cuts all the way around. So. I'd like to chamfer the edge of this. I don't know exactly how big this is. Let me inspect, click here, click here. It's 0.6 millimeters. Okay, so now I'll go up here to modify chamfer. Click there, 0.6 millimeters. That looks good. And then I'll just hold down control and click all the rest of these edges around. Now I could have patterned the chamfer as well, but I didn't think of it. So I'll just repeat these. Okay. I think that gives us what we need. We've still got a ridge around there that will clip onto the connector so this thing won't fall off, but we've broken up that those hoops of material around the outside. So it's now thinner, should be a little bit stretchier, should be a little bit easier to get on and off.
Let me send this to the printer and let's try it. And back out at the mill one more time. Here is the finished part. You can see those little teeth around the inside. It looks exactly like the CAD model, which of course it does. But the real question is, how does it work? And yeah, that is a lot easier to put on and take off. I'm really liking that. Let's go ahead and put it on permanently. And of course, once again, I've got the little lanyard twisted. So let me straighten that out because even though it doesn't matter, it matters. Okay, and I, I put it on backwards. The cap's facing the wrong direction. So let me pull this off and put it back on the right way. There, no twist, perfect. And that looks good. I think this part's done. I'm happy with that, exactly how it is. Seems to fit nice and snug. In fact, the fit and the motion feels exactly the same as before, but with those little teeth around the inside, it is way easier to get on and off. That feels pretty good to me. I think we're gonna call this done. Now I just need to go back and uh, spool up a job and print about a dozen of these for all the connectors I have all around the shop, and we should be good to go. I love projects like this. I love having an idea, sketching it up on the computer, and having it in my hands a few minutes later. And I really love being able to make small changes, hit the go button, and have a new version in my hand with very little additional effort. With machining, every iteration has the same cost. And I usually spend way more time on the design, trying to make sure that the first version is good enough, and then I live with whatever problems it has just to avoid having to make it again. So if 3D printing is suitable for the part, it is always going to be my first choice. As always, the files for this project are available on Patreon. If you like what I do here and you want to help support the channel, becoming a patron is a great way to do it. Thank you for watching.